grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Almighty. To the elect across the earth, we love y'all so much. Welcome back to the dinner table. Now hold on, I know you probably about to say, Servant of the Lord, you know very well you in a hotel lobby at some random table. Yes, you are correct. But as we travel, wherever we can find the table, you better believe we're going to use it and dedicate it to the king of the kitchen. Amen. We've missed y'all so much. You must be starving. I'm not going to play with you. Okay, I know you do not mess with a child of God when they hungry. I don't have my plate to slide to you, okay, because we on the road. But listen, this word right here is going to change your life. Now, if you're new to the channel, you probably like, what is this? I thought this was a, a Bible teaching. This brother got me at a dinner table. Listen, Christ has many titles. He's not just the Lord of Lords. He is not just the King of Kings. He's the chef of all chefs. Can I get a name? Man. He's the king of the kitchen, amen. And I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm your I'm basically your waiter. I'm gonna serve you this amazing meal that Jesus Christ has chefed up in the kitchen. Now, brothers and sisters, this message right here called the throne of the Most High God, the throne of the Almighty, the throne of the Messiah. So many titles it can have. I'm undecided about a title, so I may just put something else on the screen as I'm editing it. This message was preached at the conference that just came to pass in Kentucky, in Louisville, Kentucky. And let me just first start by giving glory to the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, we are so humbled and thankful by your hunger and thirst to gather together. I mean, saints of God, even with a freaked out weather storm, saints of God, even with a freak snowstorm, thousands of flights canceled, we still ended up over 600 of us together at the conference. It was so amazing. We worshiped together. We cried out together. We sang together. And of course, demons were casted out in the name above every name. Yeshua the Messiah and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this message was preached, but there was a lot of spiritual warfare and something happened with the camera. But the crowd camera did record the message. But there were certain things that I wasn't able to talk about during the conference sermon because we were running out of time. We literally worshiped for so long. It was so beautiful. And we also had to make sure we had enough time to get baptisms done. Literally eight hours for a conference is no longer enough time and brothers and sisters be on the lookout there is another major conference right around the corner but I'm not going to take too much of your time you are hungry for the word of the Lord and as a servant of the most High, and as the servant of the Lord I am so excited to give you this meal amen will you pray with me come on heavenly father we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua the Almighty. Forgive us of all sins and wash us in your holy blood, mind, body, 
soul, and spirit. May your word go forth as a light unto our feet, health to our bones, to convict us, correct us, encourage us. Faith comes by the hearing of the word of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we lift you far above the ministry, far above any man, woman, or child. Lord, you are the head of this ministry. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Help our minds, Lord, to focus. May we have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Bind any outside attacks from the enemy to try to hinder this word from going in and changing us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. I hope you did that prayer. Now, the reason why this message is so special. When it was preached in Louisville, Kentucky, during this conference that just came to pass, we were utterly broken. I was weeping like a baby before 600 people. <laughs> And I know I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of people that were touched and weeping with me. And I know that I have more strength now to preach it. And I can't guarantee I won't break again. But I have this unspeakable joy knowing a greater revelation about Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready to know your Savior greater than you did yesterday? Are you ready to know a more detailed description of the Father and Son? I, I'm about to do the walk away. You better stop. And if you're new to the channel, you might just see me get up and walk away. It's because sometimes it gets so strong. The word is so overwhelmingly beautiful. Sometimes I just got to take a walk real quick and, and, and take a breather. <laughs> and I know a lot of y'all walk with me. So with that being said, let's go. You ready? Are you ready? Okay, let me stop playing with you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did, can we get a group hug? Come on, bring it in. Come on. I, I, for y'all that are mad at me because it's been a while since we had a dinner table message, fist bump a piece. Come on, bring it in. Uh, ah, there. Come on, pursue peace with all men. You know we love you. All right, let's go. The throne of Yeshua the Messiah. Wow. First off, what we have to establish is there are many thrones. Amen. Let me just let me just move this over here. Just wanna forgive me, y'all. This microphone is brolic. Okay, I'm not a fan. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Maybe get the uh, the other stand that I used to have, where it kind of comes in sideways. You know, it's like 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 it's about to launch through the hotel roof. <laughs> okay, so there are many thrones. Okay. But there is one throne above them all. Just as Yeshua is the king of all kings and lord of all lords, the Most High God has the throne above all thrones. Are you following? Follow me as I follow Christ, the Bible says. But what is a throne? What does a throne stand for? I know these are basics, and you're probably like, come on, man of God, I know a throne represents authority and rulership and headship, and yes. But what if I told you there's a revelation when it comes to the Father and Son that's going to change your life. Your life will never be the same. If you humble yourself, if you seek him as a child, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. I'm a, hopefully, I'm going to just move this over just a, tip, just a little bit. Hopefully, it don't, you know, the audio is still clean, okay? But I can't have it right in front. Like, I feel like 
I can't see y'all and y'all can't see me. I can't see you anyways, but you know. So I want you to go with me to Isaiah 14. I want you to see verse 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It had raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. You see that? We don't really have to take too much time with that. You understand, you get it. I mean, look all through the word of God. Kings have a kingdom. Think about this logically. A king has a kingdom. A kingdom has a house, temple, a, a, a residence for the king. And that king has a throne, a place that he sits as ruler. As the one having sovereign authority. Right? But who created all thrones? I want you to go with me to Colossians. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Look at what it says. It says in verse 16 going down. Well, 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions. Or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, of course, this is talking about the Messiah. So he created all thrones and all powers, all dominions. Have you considered that while doing spiritual warfare, you not only strike at the enemy, but you have to strike at the throne of the enemy. You have to strike at the thrones of the principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. If they are a ruler, they rule from a throne. Remember, there be thrones many, the Bible says. Think about this logically. A throne empowers that ruler. You remove the throne, you remove the authority of that king. Oh, that's deep. So I'm trying to drop something on you to help you warfare greater when it comes to fighting the devil and his kingdom. Okay? But, nevertheless... Jesus Christ created all thrones. While we're on the topic of the enemy's thrones, think about wicked rulers through the time. Think of wicked rulers through time. They had a throne. Look at Herod, Pilate, Caesar, Pharaoh. Did they not have thrones? I don't want to spend too much time, but let's just go to Acts chapter 12. When it comes to the enemy, we don't need to take too much time. But for the sake of warfare, I want you to go to 12, 21. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them, you see. So think of a throne like a charger for your phone, right? They're empowered when they sit down on that throne, right? Sort of like they plug into that throne and they're empowered. 
Exodus chapter 12, 29, read that on your own time. Exodus 11, 5, read that on your own time. Let's go to Psalms 94 real quick. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying this meal or what? This is, I'm telling you, you are about to be tremendously blessed, you that loves the Lord in sincerity. Go to Psalms with me, 94. Come on. Psalms 94. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. Verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Which frameth mischief by law. Are you seeing this? So there is a throne of iniquity. You know that Satan has a throne. I want you to go to Isaiah with me. Chapter 14. Watch this. Isaiah 14. Going from verse 12 down. Look at what it says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt, what? My throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the midst of the north. You see? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You know, we got a message coming out by God's grace called the Most High God. Oh, that's going to be exciting. But the enemy has a throne. I want you to also write down Isaiah 47. And uh, it's going to be verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughters of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. You see, when you cast down the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Almighty, make sure you cast down the throne as well. Wow. Remember that the Antichrist wants to sit in the temple of God. And we've established that human beings are the real temple. And if that human being worships the Almighty and gives their life to the Savior, Christ, of, Christ Jesus, they become the throne of God and the Holy Spirit dwells within them. The Antichrist wants people to worship him and obey his laws so that way he as the spirit of Antichrist can dwell in them and enthrone himself within them. Wow. So I get you get it, right? Let's let's keep it moving. We've gone through enough exposing the enemy's throne and we dropped a little bit of a spiritual warfare nugget on what you need to do when you're striking at principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, you must also strike against the throne. Thrones. Yes. So let's talk about the throne of the Almighty. Let's talk about the throne of God. Now, the interesting thing is in 1 Samuel chapter 2, Let's go there quickly. I'm going to move quick. I would love this to be no more than an hour and a half. But y'all know that don't always work like that. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be a three hour message. Amen. But we're going to see how it goes. First Samuel chapter two. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. Verse eight. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the what? Throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. Wow. Throne of glory. 
Oh, no, no, no. We just beginning. This is it. We just beginning. Let's go to 2 Samuel now. Verse 13 going down. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he committeth iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. So it's very evident that there is a throne that God establishes forever. But I want you to go to 2 Chronicles 18. Let's go. Come on. We'll try to do this in order as quickly as we can. 2 Chronicles 18. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. Verse 18. Again he saith, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Wow. Now there are certain scriptures um, and I'll put them on the screen. You have the vision in Isaiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel. Now we're not going to get into those today. Because it'll end up causing this to be. It'll end up causing this message to be four hours long. But I want on, on your own time. Go on a journey. And you will see the almighty on the throne. High and lifted up. One like unto the appearance of a man. The Bible says. And it actually works out quite well. As we've recently uploaded the message. The image of God. Or what does God look like, right? So if you haven't watched that, watch that. Because it's going to bring you on a journey. As we're going through these different topics that glorify the Almighty. Amen. But if you go to Psalms chapter 9. Let's go to Psalms 9. Verse 4 going down. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne of judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. Listen. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Are you seeing this? So there is a throne of judgment. Make sure you're writing these down. You should have a notepad. You should have a pen. Of course, you should have the word of the Lord. And of course, a hunger and a thirst. Amen. But now we're going to go to Psalms 47. We just established this is a throne of judgment. But what else? What are the other attributes? Go to Psalms 47. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. Look at what it says in verse 8. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of of his holiness. Are you seeing this? Wow. So this is a throne of judgment. This is a throne of holiness. Write this down. But now we're going to go to Psalms 89. Look at what it says in verse 14. It says, justice, it says, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Wow. So justice and judgment, mercy and truth. Are you starting to see this? 
What is it that establishes the throne of the Most High? But this Psalms is very special because when you go to verse 29, he says, His seed also will make, His seed also will I make to endure forever in His throne as the days of heaven. Did you catch that? Who is this referring to? Now I want you to go to Psalms 93. Okay, we're just sticking to Psalms because there's so much here that people just breeze over. Look at what it says in Psalms 93. Look at what it says in verse 2. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. You see that? This is an everlasting throne. Now let's go to Psalms 97. Get ready. Verse 2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Did we not already read that in another Psalms? Go to Jeremiah, just, wow, I just opened right up to Jeremiah. Go to 22, look at what it says. Jeremiah 22, verse 2 going down. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O King of Judah, that sitteth upon the throne of David, thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by the gates. Thus saith the Lord, execute you judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in his place. And as you know, Jeremiah was crying out but he was trying to show them this mystery of how to establish the throne of the Almighty. How is it upheld? How is it maintained? What is it about the throne of the Almighty God? Oh, that's so good. So how is the throne established? I want you to go to Proverbs 16. Let's go. Look at what it says now. Verse 12. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. Why? Because they sit on a throne that is supposed to represent righteousness and righteous judgment and mercy and so on and so forth. But look at what it says after that. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. But this is very interesting because Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Remember it says that in Isaiah. Remember it says that in Jeremiah. We know that throughout the scriptures, Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. Right? Wow. So this means that Jesus Christ establishes the throne of God. Are you seeing it? Remember, this ministry is called the revelations of Jesus Christ. We know that there is a book called Revelation of Jesus Christ because it is the, it is a book that is the revealing of Jesus Christ. But God gave us the ministry title, but God gave this ministry the name Revelations of Jesus Christ because he reveals mysteries about the Messiah to us. That's exciting. So now you're seeing that the throne is established by righteousness. But how is it upheld? How is the throne of God upheld? Now I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 20. Look at what it says now. We're about to find out. Verse 28. 
Mercy and truth preserve the king and his throne is upholding by mercy. So righteousness establishes the throne. Mercy upholds it. Are you following this? Last time I checked, Jesus Christ is the mercy of God. He came by grace and truth, didn't he? Didn't he come with mercy? Wow. Isaiah 16. Let's just go there to bring it together. It's precept upon precept, right, brothers and sisters? Look at what it says in verse 5. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth. In the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. Are you hearing this? Remember, and we're not going to get into it on this uh, particular study because, again, we have to stay on one path or else the video will end up five hours long. But there's an entire another study on the throne of David, right? Even from the bloodline and, and when referring to the seed of David. Remember, Jesus Christ is the Lion of Judah, the root and offspring of David. But this time, instead of just establishing the throne on the outside, Jesus Christ established the throne made from flesh. Almost did the walk away, y'all. I'm trying to compose myself. I'm trying to keep myself from doing too many walkaways today. But I can't promise anything. But I want us to go back to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 29. Watch this. Tell me if you see Jesus Christ. You ready? Verse 14. The king that faithfully judges the poor... His throne shall be established forever. There was only one king that did this perfectly. And that is Yeshua, the Almighty, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When he came to the earth, don't, do not get it twisted. At that moment, he's king of all kings. Even the wise men knew this when they came to worship him as a baby. But he came first as a servant riding on a donkey. He's coming back as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings riding on a white horse to execute righteous judgment. The Bible says where the word of the King is, there is power. That's why there are ministries that have authority and, and ministries that don't. Jesus Christ has to be present within that servant of God when they speak. I... <laughs> oh, man. I, I said I would try so hard not to do walkaways. Now this verse we're about to read in Proverbs 25 is going to be for later on. But I want to read it now so it, it'll register with you later in the message. Go to Proverbs 25. Listen to what it says. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Remember that. Remember that, okay? Now, so we've talked about how a throne is established. We talked about how a throne is upheld. All of these things that we've talked about point to the Son of God every single time. Every single time. Think of how he was with the poor. Think of how merciful he is. Think about the righteousness. The Bible says the Lord our righteousness. Think about Jesus Christ. 
So now that we've brushed upon this mystery of the throne of God, that's, that's a great title, by the way. Now we got to go to a whole nother level with this mystery. So as I'm meditating on this, there's a lot of people that will try to mock and discredit Christ as being the one and true living God. And we know there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. We know that there is a father and son relationship. Even now as I speak to you, the father glorifies the son and the son glorifies the father. And if somebody denies the father and son relationship, the letter of John says they have a spirit of antichrist. That denies the father and the son. And once you understand. The current of glorification. I'm not going to go there. That's a whole different Bible study. One of my favorite messages. The Lord has ever given me. And it ain't even ready yet. So you will have mockers. That deny Jesus Christ. As the almighty God. They'll say that. Uh, he and the Father are not one, basically. They'll say that he is a God, but he's not the most high God. He's a God or kind of God or he's my God, but he's not the God, right? But they're foolish in their imaginations. They know not God. What we want to do today is see a mystery about the throne of God. When it comes to the Father and the Son, your life will never be the same, I'm telling you. And I'm very excited for you to find out this mystery to draw you closer to the one and true living God. Blessed be the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, they'll say, well, Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God. So he's not God. He can't be God. He sits at the right hand of God. Well, let's go through these scriptures. Let's go ahead to the book of Acts chapter 2. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. 34. You ready? For David is not ascended into heavens, into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Wow. But let's go to the original Psalms in chapter uh, 110. Psalms 110. Come on. Psalms 110. Look at what it says now. Are you ready? Are you there? Well, wait for me. I ain't there. Yeah, okay, I'm here. Let's go. Verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Notice God the Father is saying to Jesus Christ, sit at my right hand until. I want you to highlight that word until. That means sit at my right hand for a season until I make thy enemy thy footstool. Wow. All your enemies, thy footstool. Go to Matthew chapter 22. Let's go. You ready for it? Look at what it says now. Verse 44. 
It says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And you more than likely know the verse. You know what Christ was explaining to them. Right? But now we're going to continue now. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Let's go. Hebrews 1. Look what it says now. Look at what it says. Go to verse 13. But to which of the angels saith he at any time, Sit on my right hand until... I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now you're starting to see it. I want you to go to Hebrews 10. Now this is, this is a very important one. So make sure you're paying attention. Hallelujah. Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Listen. Listen. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wow. Wow. Oh, this is so good. That word there is waiting, you see. So Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Waiting. Until his enemies are made his footstool. You better catch this. You go to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken. This is the sum. We have such a high priest. Who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty. In the heavens. And instead of taking 20 minutes going through all those scriptures. Remember when Stephen was martyred? He said he seen the Son of God standing at the right hand. Remember? It goes on and on and on and on. Colossians chapter 3. Now this is an important uh, one that we have to bring up now. Because there's a lot of uh, false teachers online that will try to deceive you. If you don't understand the scriptures, okay? They'll try to call Jesus Christ the Messiah, a created being. Now, if we're referring to when the Messiah was born and the word became flesh, of course, as a human being, of course, as flesh, he was formed in the womb of Mary. I mean, but... The Messiah. Let, let's just go here. Chapter 3. Verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth. On the right hand of God. Now. I want you to remember something. In verse 15 of chapter 1. Look at this. It says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And there are false teachers that will tell you, see, it's talking about Jesus was created or he was, he, he, he became to exist at, at a moment in time. But that firstborn in Hebrew tradition, you will know, Okay, what does a firstborn get more than his other brothers? He gets the firstborn rights, you understand. He gets the dominion, the authority. He's in charge. This is what this verse is talking about. So now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 1. We're going to bring all this together, okay? Chapter 1. Look at what it says in verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now, 
the seven spirits is something that I want to save for a message about the Holy Ghost. The mighty Holy Spirit, okay? So we're going to reserve that and talk about that on another message by the grace of God. But I, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 4. It says in verse 1, And this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight look up, in sight like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. You hear that? And there were seven lamps of the fire of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Wow. And the first beast was like unto a lion, the second beast like unto a calf, the third beast uh, had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You see this. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Have you ever thought that sometimes what is, is the, the, the logical what some people in the world call common sense. Holy, holy, holy. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Lord, God Almighty. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Which was and is and is to come. Do you think it's a coincidence that they, they say holy three times? Remember that Timothy says, For great is the mystery of godliness. We only get what comes off of our master's table. But are we not grateful? The more we can learn the mysteries of the Most High God, the Almighty, the Holy One of Israel. This, these are my favorite. And I plead with some of you, you get more intrigued by exposed videos now don't get me wrong there's a time and a place to expose satan on any level on any level whether it's the abomination whether it's what he hides in in uh companies and logos and all type of stuff you already know there's nothing wrong with that we must expose the devil the bible says but this should be your favorite these dinner table messages that draw you closer to the knowledge of the Son of God and knowing who this mighty God really is. Wow. So now that we read that, I want to transition. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 6 that we are the temple of God, right? Well, did not the Bible also say that the kingdom of heaven is within you? There can't, there can't be a kingdom without a king and there has to be a throne for that king to sit on. So if the kingdom of heaven is within you and I and the king of all kings is in you and I, where is the throne 
of Yeshua the Messiah within us. <laughs> Let's go. Ephesians chapter 3. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Ephesians 3. 17. Oh, this is so good. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So where does Christ dwell? He dwells in a heart. Which means our heart is where he establishes his throne. This is what, wow, wow. This is why we must be circumcised in the heart. Created me a new and a clean heart. Because he now will establish our heart, the throne of Christ, with righteousness. And uphold it with mercy and grace. He will judge righteously from our heart. And this is why we change. Brothers and sisters, this is why you're not the same person you used to be. Because the king of all kings... Is establishing his throne, which is your heart. And many years ago, we've already established how our body is actually created to replicate the throne of God in heaven. Right? There's 24 elders that surround the throne of God. Your heart has 24 ribs that surround it. There are four beasts that surround the throne. You have four chambers on your heart. Right? This is, I mean, that most of you already know from past teachings. But this is phenomenal. This means that we are the temple of God. The kingdom is within us. The king is in us and his throne is in us. This is why the Antichrist wants to change a person's you-know-what. He wants to commit the abomination of desolation so he can take over the throne and sit in people's hearts. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Now, this is where it's about to get very deep. And this is where during the conference, so many of us ended up breaking and just weeping together. Because it brought us to a whole new level of his love for us. How much Christ truly loves you and I. You better be sitting down because this is life changing, okay? Okay. Remember I told you about David's throne and how we're not really going to deal with that because that, that's talking about the, the seed, right? Remember, he is the root and offspring of David by inheritance. Yeshua the Messiah. Wow. Oh, I can't do it. That's a whole nother teaching. I'm even downloading right now. Let's just say this. Okay, I'm not. I'm not because I'll end up I'll end up doing it. That aspect of it, we're going to leave that to the left for now. Okay? Because that alone is a completely it could be its own Bible study, the root and offspring of David. We'll we'll have to say that as tempted as I am, we're going to have to save that. So we've established that we are the temple of God and that Jesus reigns from our heart. And it's interesting because the heart is what keeps you alive. It's what pumps the blood. The life of a man is in his blood and the heart is the essence of the very life of your blood. The heart beats whether you tell it to or not. It, it continues beating day and night. 
because you can't command the throne of God. Oh, that's so good. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is so good. This is so good. But let's talk about this. What does the Bible say about heaven? I want you to go to Acts with me, chapter 7, just real quick. Acts chapter 7. Go to verse 49. It says, verse 48 going down. Howbeit the Most High dwells not in temples made with the hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? You see? And then he goes on to say, having my hands made all these things. And then he goes on to say how they are stiff-necked. They are uncircumcised and where? Heart and ears. And in doing so, they always resist the Holy Ghost. You see, when the heart is not circumcised, it is not established for the Messiah to sit down and rule your life for you. Oh, this is so good. I can't help but to think of like cartoons and movies that growing up as a child, I could use now as kind of like an analogy. Maybe one that's more modern, right? Like, um, what's that movie? Uh, Pacific Rim. Now, a lot of times I give movies as analogies and things like that. I'm not promoting the movie or telling you to go watch it, okay? But I want you to see parables and analogies. And that's one thing Jesus Christ loved to do. He loved to compare things so you could understand greater, right? Like the kingdom of heaven is like this or like that. In that movie Pacific Rim, they created these giant machines, in a bodily shape and two men or a man and a woman or whoever they would get inside and literally connect to the machine and they would rule this giant robot machine from the chest of the machine right that was where they were stationed I mean it's like a perfect analogy about Jesus Christ he reigns in our heart and he controls us from his base, which is our bosom, our heart. Wow. Are you serious right now? This is why we must submit to him. Get circumcised in our heart. This conference that just passed was dedicated to the circumcision of the heart. You think it is coincidence that God would give this message? Wow. He, he gives his command from the throne. It represents his authority. Jesus Christ sits on our heart as the throne. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, Lord. Go to Matthew 23, quickly, quickly. Matthew 23, verse 22. And he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. You see? So heaven is my throne, the Bible says. Now, I'm very tempted because there's another mystery here referring to Jesus Christ that I'm saving for another message called Jesus Christ the Most High. For another message called the Most High God. But I'm going to hold off on that now. I'm going to hold off now. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 5. Look at what it says now in verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Well, right there, brother, Jesus is calling the Father God, so he can't be God. You know, it's, a, it's, it's absolutely terrifying how many people dedicate their lives 
trying to deceive and, and, and make people believe that Jesus is not the almighty living God. Let me just say this because I'm not going to take too much time off of this topic. Jesus Christ is almighty. Whatever he does, he's going to do it perfectly. If he's king of all kings, he will be king perfectly. His majesty will be beyond your understanding. His royalty will make your eyes water. But if he comes to the earth as a servant of his father, he is going to be a servant perfectly. Which means if they want to hoist him up on a horse, he's not going to. He's going to ride on a donkey. Which means that he will wash our feet. Which means he will serve us because he has to do that position perfectly. That's all it is. If you have a child, brother or sister, I have two sons. I am their father, but I am not greater than them when it comes to humanity. I'm not a greater human than them. We are equal as far as humanity, but I have a different title than them. But I'm not greater than my children when it comes to both of us. When it comes to me and them both being human. So again, I'm not going to get into that on this message. But I just wanted to say that to help you get it. Okay. There is a mystery to the almighty. But he's merciful. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, it will be given. If you knock, the door will open. How much do you desire to know about the one and true living God? How much do you desire to know the mysteries of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Remember, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 19. Let's go. Matthew 19. Look at what it says. This is going to be verse... 28 Jesus said unto them truly I say unto you that you which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his what glory you also shall sit upon 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel but I know that God in the Old Testament don't share his glory with none you see we're trying to bring it together so you can see this and and remember you you got to go you got to go to other teachings like for example created from within if you haven't seen that message please watch it there are other messages that you need to watch to give you a greater revelation of the oneness of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And as much as blasphemers online want to mock and be like, oh, you worship three separate gods and ha, ha, ha. They're treading on very dangerous ground because they mock that which they don't understand, the Bible says. Out of all things, we should be very careful what we say when it comes to the Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, the Holy One of Israel. So let's go ahead. Let's bring it all together. So now in Matthew 25, just real quick, I just want to read this one as well while we're here. Verse 31. Look at what it says. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Wow. Very interesting. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. This one a lot of y'all know, and if you don't know, you're about to be tremendously blessed. Get ready for it. This is amazing. Hebrews chapter 1. And again, this is its own Bible study. 
Lord willing, it'll be a dinner table at some point in the near future. But I want you to see what it says in chapter 1, verse 8, referring to God the Father speaking to the Messiah, to the Lamb of God. Look what it says now. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Remember, we've already established how was a throne established in righteousness. You think it's coincidence that God the Father is speaking to his son, calling him God. He's not saying, thy throne, O a God. He's saying, thy throne, O God. Think of this logically, this mystery where even in the book of Revelation, the Messiah is calling his father his God. He says, my God and your God, he says in Revelation. But yet God the Father here is calling his son God. What? Wow. Wow. Hebrews chapter 4, just real quick. Look at what it says. In verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Who is it that gives us mercy and grace? Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So if Jesus is grace itself, if he is the grace of God made flesh, if he's the truth of God made flesh, then who is on the throne of grace? I'm, I'm trying hard not to do too many, too many walkaways. You could do one if you want. I don't blame you. But what if I told you as we bring this together, you are about to go to a whole new level of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You are about to be so touched by the love of God. I'm speaking to those that sincerely seek Christ in truth and spirit. And I am so excited to be your server and serve you this meal cooked by the king of the kitchen. Are you ready? Remember earlier we talked about something. How we are the temple of God and that the kingdom of heaven is within and that the king of all kings sits in our heart, which is his established throne. And as he's delivering you, he's removing demons out of you. He's cleaning up bad habits. What is he really doing? He is establishing his throne. He is expanding his kingdom on the inside of you. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. But I started meditating on this. The Bible says he will reveal his secrets unto his servants. Remember that. Remember that. And I'm like, Lord, in one scripture you see you're at the right hand of the Father. But that word until, people overlook it. Until means for a period of time. If a father says to his child, you are not allowed to leave the dinner table until you finish your plate. You finish what's on your plate. I hope you don't eat the plate. That means that that child, when he or she is done clearing their plate, then they can be removed from the dinner table. If the boss says to you, you clocked in at 9, you have to stay until 5 o'clock. That means at 5.01, I'm out of here, I'm going home. Right? So he's at the right hand until. But what happens then? And what is this glory that he had with the Father? Are you ready for this? Go to Revelation with me, chapter 19. Come on. Revelation chapter 19. Let's go. 
This is it right here, y'all. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at what it says. Oh, this is so amazing. And after these things, I heard a great voice, so much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Notice these key words now are very, they're, 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 they're bubbling up in you because we read earlier in Proverbs and in Psalms on how righteousness establishes a throne. How it's upheld by mercy, how truth and righteousness and all of these, all of these things referring to the throne, right? Now, it, now when you read it, it hit different, don't it? Don't it? Watch this. Oh, this is so good. We're going to read it again. We're we definitely going to read it again. Salvation, glory, and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and had avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God. That sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you that fear him both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of the mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. But wait a minute, did you catch it? I hope, look, I hope you're paying attention now. Because you know it's, a, it's about to go to another level. Are you ready? It said a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. Wait a minute, wait, wait, pause. Are you telling me God the Father, his voice came out and it said, praise our God? Or is it that, <laughs> I'm about to do some walk aways. I, I don't know how long I can sit in this chair. Who is this voice proceeding from the throne? If Jesus is always at the right hand. Who dare could be within the throne of God the Father to speak and command all creation to worship God the Father? Something has happened. There is a shift, a change going on. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. There is something that has happened when it comes to the throne of the Most High God. Are you ready for it? So there is a voice. Wow. That comes out of the throne. Not thrones. Not some kind of throne. This is talking about the, the throne. Of the Almighty God. The Most High God. There is a voice that comes out from the throne. Not beside the throne. Not somewhere around the throne. No. It comes out from. It proceedeth from the throne of God. Saying. Listen. Praise our God. All his servants. Wow. Oh you must be so excited. You probably already did a walk away before me. Are you ready? So, let's go ahead now. Let's, let's see this mystery. I want you to go to Revelation with me. And we're going to go to verse 20. We're going to go to chapter 22. Let's go. Revelation 22. Now look at what it says. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Wait a minute. It doesn't say thrones of God. It says throne of God and of the Lamb. So a foolish Galatian, blasphemers will mock 
and, and be like, what is Jesus on the lap of the Father? Ha ha ha. You better be careful. These wicked people online, sadly, a lot of them are beyond savable. They've been reprobate because of their mockery and their blaspheme. It has gone beyond that which is forgivable. They started to even mock the Holy Ghost, denying him as the almighty God. Do you know what happens if somebody tries to trick you to deny the Holy Ghost as God? To openly say that the Holy Ghost is not you know who? That's blasphemy. Do you think it's a light thing to say to the Almighty, you are not the Almighty? To say to God, you are not God? You don't think that's blasphemy? You better be careful. The Bible says you shouldn't be, there shouldn't be many teachers. You shouldn't have 80 people you want to learn from online. Pick a handful and keep it that way. And let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you into all truth. He's got to be your number one teacher. But as far as men that Christ will speak through to teach you, I'm warning you. You, you got to be careful. But are you ready for this? Are you ready? So as mockers will mock, we're going to go in and see the truth of the mystery. How is it? It says the throne singular of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruit and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now listen, for there shall be no more curse, but watch this, the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Wow. And it goes on and on, but you're seeing now that there has been a change of wording. Because all through the New Testament, it was, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool but after that happens my son you will go back to where you sit uh. wait 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 something has happened when it comes to the description of the throne of the most high god Remember I told you earlier there was a particular proverb that it would be brought to remembrance later on in the study. Do you remember? Go to Proverbs 25. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. You ready? Proverbs 25. Look at what it says. You ready? Verse 5. Take away the wicked from before the king. And his throne shall be established in righteousness. That means that as long as there is wickedness before the throne of the king, it cannot be fully established in righteousness. But once you remove the wickedness from before the king, let's read it again, 25.5. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. So there is a give and take. If the wicked is removed, then the throne will be fully established in righteousness. Now, how many of y'all caught something? Go to Revelation. Notice that the wording is different after Something happens. Now we know that the book of Revelation is not written in chronological order. We know this verbatim. And if you haven't seen it's worse than you think, you need to watch that documentary. Go to the website, Revelations, go to Revelations of Jesus Christ dot com. Click on Mark of the Beast and watch those videos. You need to know what's going on in this last hour. But let's go to chapter 20. 
Look at what it says here. I'm going to see how many of y'all have already caught it. Not y'all that was at the conference. You already know the mystery. But that's all right. You getting, you getting leftovers. Amen. Let's talk about this now. Watch. It says. Hold on. Let, let's go now. Ver, chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand, a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed for a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon it. Boom, pause, wait, what? Hold on a minute. Are you hearing this? Listen again. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, now hold on a minute. This, this is kind of off topic, but you can't look at time the way you see it through human eyes. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So when it says those that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, that doesn't just mean in the end of days. That means that any time when somebody has been martyred, murdered, persecuted, right? But it also says those who did not take the mark of the beast. But that's not what I wanted you to focus on. Notice that as you enter into chapter 21, it's I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And then it goes into the mystery about how now the throne of God and the Lamb, shouldn't it be the throne of God and the Lamb on the right hand? What happened? Well, Proverbs, are you ready? Proverbs chapter 25 says, if you remove the wicked, the throne will be, will be fully established. Well, notice how in Revelation chapter, we just read it now in 20, Satan is bound. The Antichrist, the false prophet, all the wicked is bound. It's removed from before the king, from before the throne of God. And because the wicked is removed, the throne of God is established. Uh, are, you, are you getting this? Let me say it again. Proverbs says prophetically, if you remove the wicked from before the king, from before his throne, his throne will fully be established in righteousness. So the wicked has been removed in Revelation 20. And then all of a sudden, now the throne is being described differently we're starting to see the vision of what it means to have the throne of god fully established what does that mean servant of the lord are you ready for it where was jesus in the beginning wow before he volunteered because the bible says a body thou hast prepared for me. Jesus Christ of Nazareth said, I will go. I will save them. I will be the sacrificial lamb. But what was this glory? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Lord, this is so strong. This is so strong. This is so strong. Are you ready? This is where we started to break. The tears became so strong. It's okay to cry. You know that, right? When your tears are sincere. 
when you weep in the joy of the Lord, when you broken before God, and you can't help but to weep because you're overwhelmed by his love. That's a good thing. Because as a child of God, you get touched by how much he loves you. And it only gets better and better. He goes from glory to glory. And you're going to learn things about the almighty God that you didn't know yesterday. You'll find out tomorrow by God's grace. And more and more and more and more. Unsearchable riches in Christ Jesus. But he allows us to know him. We search him out with his light. Oh, come on. You ready for it? Go to John chapter 17. Come on, let's bring it together, saints. Let's bring it together, brothers and sisters. Come on. John 17. I told you this prayer right here is, 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 is so underrated. So many people forget this powerful prayer. These words spoke Yahshua and lifted up his eyes unto heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. You notice that love they have for one another? You notice that the father glorifies the son and the son glorifies the father. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, listen, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Pay attention. I have glorified thee on earth. Remember, remember Jesus Christ came to the earth to be the servant of God and to serve others. So he did perfectly what he came to do. He had to even die. He had to be obedient even to the death of the cross. He says, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. And now, O Father, pay attention. Here it is. Glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So there's something that was different from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's something that was not as it is as he's speaking, he had to sacrifice more than just his life on the cross. He didn't have the same glory. Listen. Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That means he had to leave something temporarily to accomplish what he needed to on the earth. Are you following? He had some kind of glory with the Father. You want to know? Do you want to see this mystery? Do you want to put to silence the blasphemers who try to belittle Jesus Christ and undermine him and claim he's some God but he's not the almighty God? Here it is. Listen. I have manifested your name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Listen, for I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely, listen, that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou did send me. Wait a minute. He says, I came out from thee. That word in the Greek is a tough one. It's echerchomia. I believe that's how it's said. I'm still learning the Greek words, so be patient with me. But it literally means, listen now, I'll put it on the screen. It means to come out from or emitted as from the heart and or the mouth. Wait a minute. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? 
He said, I came out from thee. Well, wait a minute, Jesus Christ. What do you mean you came out from the Father? Where were you? Oh, <laughs> this is so strong. This got to be one of my favorite messages ever. I know I say that a lot. Let's just do it. Are y'all ready? Go to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Y'all ready for it now? Come on. Gospel of John, chapter 1. Look at what it says in verse 18. No man had seen God at any time, only the begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him. Notice Jesus says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He didn't say, I was in the Father, but the Father's in me. He would always say, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. That means literally, Jesus Christ on the earth, God the Father was in him and he was in the Father in heaven. Tell me it's not true. But the fullness that he had in the beginning. There was something he had to sacrifice for a period of time. But you just read here in verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. Only the begotten son which is in the bosom of the father. This Greek word is called pos. I hope that's how it's pronounced. Uh, if it's not. Maybe you know Greek better than me. But it's K-O-L-P-O-S. It literally means the front in between where the arms are. This whole place right here. You know where the heart is. You know the chest. This is where Jesus Christ dwells in God the Father. Are you catching it yet? Okay. All right. Okay. John chapter 8. Let's go. Let's bring it together now. Verse 42. Look. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Wait a minute. You proceeded forth from God, but Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, where were you in God the Father? And what were you doing in God the Father? Revelation chapter 3. Let's go. <clears throat> Come on now. Remember, this mystery is being revealed in the last hour. God is revealing mysteries. I pray that you are thankful and grateful. Remember, in the days of the flood of Noah... Their minds, their hearts were evil continually. Why? Satan set up his throne and their heart was darkened, the Bible says. Wow. Revelation 3. Come on, we got to wrap this up. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will enter into him and have dinner with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Remember, he's beginning and end, Alpha and Omega. So there is no time and space. So he's giving you a revelation in chapter 3 of what will be revealed later on in chapter 22. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> he says, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Wait a minute, Jesus Christ. I thought you were at the right hand of the throne of God. All of a sudden now, you're in the throne of your father. But how is this possible? As mockers and blasphemers, whose tongues are like a poisonous serpent, 
right? They they mock, they'll, they'll draw a picture of, of a Jesus on the lap of God the Father because their mind can't comprehend this mystery. Avoid such people, brothers and sisters. Could it be possible? I gotta do it, Lord. I gotta do it. No, no, no. Let's let's do one more. Let's do one more. Revelation 7. Revelation 7. Get another glimpse of what this is going to be. You ready? Revelation 7, verse 17. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. So you ask yourself, wait a minute, pause. God the Father don't share his glory with none. It's the most high's throne. Okay? Most of these people, they think Jesus has some secondary throne. He's some kind of a God. He's not the most high God. Equal with God the Father. Remember, it speaks of he didn't think it robbery to be equal with God. How is he in the midst of the throne? Are you ready for it? Do you remember earlier in Ephesians 3... We found out that Christ reigns from our heart. We found out that we are the temple for Christ. We are the temple for the Holy Ghost. We are the temple for God the Father. But we found out that Christ dwells in our heart. That means his throne is our heart. I'm here to tell you. That Jesus Christ sits on his throne while God the Father sits on his throne. Did you catch it? The heart of the Father is the throne of the Lamb. And this is how they share one throne. I want you to imagine that Jesus Christ loves you so much that at that moment he decided to be sent by his father. He willfully chose. But I want you to think of this. It wasn't just that he loved you so much that he died for you. He loves you so much that he got off the throne of his father's heart. Now because Christ is the almighty God. He still was in the father and the father was in him. But in the fullness he was on earth. I want you to imagine that God the father. Jesus is on the throne in the heart of God the Father. He's seated inside of the Father. That is his temple. The heart of God the Father is Jesus' throne. So as God the Father sits in his throne, Jesus sits within Jesus Christ, Yeshua, sits inside of the Father. Remember, he came from the bosom of the Father. That's right where the heart is. You notice that in Luke 16, the man was brought to the bosom of Abraham. This was a revelation to show you the mystery. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Or I could talk about how the disciple who Jesus loved, you know, John, he was always leaning on the bosom of Jesus. Why though? Did he know something that is now being revealed to you by a servant of God through the power of the Holy Ghost. So let's talk about this. I want you to imagine that Jesus Christ stands up and chooses to leave his rightful throne. Remember the glory that he had with the Father in the beginning. And he chooses... To become flesh and dwell among us. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Where Jesus? 
inside of the Father. Jesus was with his Father. Read Proverbs 8. It's a revelation that we have released many years ago through Christ. How, excuse me, Proverbs 8 is a hidden revelation of the Father and Son. Remember, Jesus is the wisdom of God. But Jesus Christ, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Where? Seated on the throne of God. Jesus was with God, sitting down as the heart of God. And He was God. All things were made by Him. Anything that I think of or create, it comes from my heart. It comes from my inner man. Remember, you need to watch the message called Created from Within. And Jesus decides to step off of his throne and walk the earth in flesh. <laughs> Experiencing pain like us. Rejection like us. Betrayal like us. Hatred like us. He felt that hate. He felt people say, crucify him. He felt what it was like to be kissed by Judas and betrayed. He felt what it was like for Peter to deny him, for Thomas to doubt him, for the Pharisees to envy him. He felt the pain when he prayed and fasted 40 days. He had to resist temptation. Butter and honey shall he eat, the Bible says, that he may learn how to refuse evil and choose good. Oh, this goes too deep, y'all. I can't do it right now. Imagine this. Imagine that he loves us so much, he longed to go back to the heart of his father. This is how it says it's the throne of God and the Lamb. Because as God the Father sits on the throne, the Son of God sits in the heart of his father. And this is how you can never separate the word of God from God. And John 15 says that the Holy Spirit proceeded from the father. But blasphemers, defiled mind, False teachers will undermine Christ in the Holy Spirit as if they're not God. Like there's just some substance that my heart is who I am. Your heart is who you are. So God the Father and the Son are one. He's so much more than you think he is. He's not just the son of God. He's the everlasting father. How? He's the prince of peace. How? He's the wisdom of God. How? He's the light of the world. How? Because he sits in the deepest, most intimate part of the most high God. He's seated in the heart of God the Father. And together they rule with authority from the throne. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wow! I mean, what do you say after a message like this? Tell me you don't feel liberated from that confusion and that snare that these blasphemers would put into your ears. Oh, he can't be God. He's at the right hand of God until. See, they always leave the until out. But now you know the mystery. Proverbs says, remove the wicked and the throne will be established in righteousness. Notice how Satan and wickedness is removed Sent into the bottomless pit. And then all of a sudden, we see a deeper revelation 
where it's God and the Lamb seated on the throne. Because Jesus Christ goes back to the place he loves the most, the heart of the Father, the throne of God. But here's what you have to understand. The same way Jesus Christ said, oh, now we got to go there so the enemy don't try to lie to some of y'all. Go to John. Go to John. Look what it says. Verse 13 of chapter 3. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Wait a minute. Read it yourself. Jesus Christ is standing in flesh on the earth, but he's saying he's also in heaven. He just said it. The Son of Man, which is in heaven. It doesn't say was in heaven or will be in heaven. He's speaking presently to them. He's saying, I am in heaven. Even though I'm here in the flesh, I am in heaven. Why? Because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But the fullness, you see? So even when Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, is seated in the heart and the bosom of his Father... As the power of the Holy Spirit, he can still be anywhere and everywhere he wills. I can't, I can't. Come on, man. I, <sighs> my life will never be the same. This word has changed my life. It has made me appreciate God the Father. So much more. Because he was pleased to have his son reign from his heart. And if you want to go deeper, Jesus is the heart of God. God the Father literally, oh Lord. Can we just say it for what it is? Can you imagine God the Father taking the heart out of his chest and giving it to you and me in human form? Making his heart become flesh to walk among us. Yet Jesus Christ was pleased to be in his father and his father was pleased to be in his son because what you need to know is that this message goes way deeper because as Jesus Christ walked the earth as the word made flesh, guess who was in his heart? Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let's talk about it. You know how Jesus dwells in our heart according to Ephesians. And if you really want to know, there's actually a Psalms. The same way in Ephesians chapter 3, the Messiah lives in our heart. That's his throne. Well, have you ever considered that when Jesus Christ was walking the earth, God the Father was actually sitting on his heart as Lord God. You see it now? So God the Father was inside of Jesus Christ in his heart. That was his throne. You see? And God the Father was executing commands and orders to his son who humbled himself to become a servant and obey his father. And God the Father would speak to his son from his throne. But he was still in heaven. Now some of you might be like, how do I understand that? Like, how am I, how could God be in heaven on the throne, but yet he was in the heart of Jesus at the same time? You are of earth, you have an earthly mind. God is from heaven, he has a heavenly mind. There are some things I know it's hard to understand. And I pray that the Lord will open up your understanding to the scriptures. Okay. Not the best analogy, but I'll try. If you look at it, I am literally here now in fullness. But I'm also, really, if you look at it, right now, wherever you are, whether you're in your house, you on lunch break, you in your car, you're laying in bed, there's a part of me with you right now. 
thank God I'm a servant of the Lord and, and that Christ in me loves you so much and we love you. But am I not with you? In a sense, maybe not literally. If I called you right now, wouldn't my voice be with you wherever you are in the world? If these little things and technology can bring me to you or you to someone else, how much greater can the Almighty be more than one place at once in different ways? I hope that helped you to understand. So now you know Jesus Christ's greatest desire the greatest desire of God the Father was that glory from the beginning for the Son of God to go back into the heart of the Father to sit down on His throne in the bosom of His Father. And together, through the mighty Holy Ghost, they reign forever and ever. The throne of righteousness, the throne of mercy and grace, the throne of truth, the throne of judgment, together, the three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It's interesting because in John 17, remember earlier I tried to pronounce a Greek word. I really want to know what that word is. It's, it's esachomai, I think is how it's pronounced. I might be wrong, but that's the word. In one of the very definitions, it's emitted as from the heart and or the mouth. No wonder Jesus Christ is not just the Son of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. He came from the heart and emitted out of his Father's mouth to speak. I, I, I gotta go, y'all. I, I gotta go. So this is it for today. At least this is part one to this phenomenal revelation. And all glory be to the Almighty God. I'm just a servant of God. And if it wasn't for his blood, I wouldn't be worthy to get such revelations and mysteries. But thanks be to the blood of the Lamb, because I love getting these mysteries and revelations. To be able to share with as many as whoever would listen and receive the truth. Wow. So now you know. Let me say it one more time. Jesus Christ longed. To go back to the bosom of his father. That is his throne. That's how much he loves you. He literally. Chose. To come to the earth. And become flesh and dwell among us. But how much he longed to go back. To his throne. The heart of the father. How much the father longed. For his beloved son in whom he is always well pleased to come back to his bosom. Wow. <laughs> wow. God and the lamb seated on the throne. And now you know how. God the father sits in the throne. Jesus Christ sits within the father in the throne. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, they reign and rule forever and ever and ever. Will you pray with me? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Almighty, I thank you for this revelation and this mystery that has been revealed now. Now I can no longer be deceived by the devil. I know the truth. I see now how Jesus Christ is on the very throne of the Father. I see how 
he was at the right hand until his enemies were made a footstool. Lord, I pray your word will magnify in me and grow in me. I want to know more about you. Because great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. And Lord Jesus Christ, just as you are in the Father and the Father is in you. Wow. You are in the heart of your Father and Father, you are in the heart of your Son. Oh. I want you to be in me, Lord. And I want to be in you. Lord Jesus Christ, my heart is your throne. I never want to take your throne and give it to anyone else. Establish it in righteousness. Remove the wicked out of my life and the iniquity out of my being that your throne can be fully established within me. Reign in me. Rule in me. Take over my mind. The more I allow you to rule in me, the more your kingdom expands into the depths of my soul, into the heightens of my mind, in every part of my entire brain, my thoughts, my memories, my spirit man, my body. I am your temple, Lord Jesus Christ. Reign, almighty God. Thank you for this revelation. And now, Father, I see how much you love us even more. That when you gave your only begotten son, it was because he proceeded, he proceeded out of your bosom. From everlasting to everlasting, he reigns and rules with you. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Only you know what it felt like. To give your son from your heart to the world and watch the world hate him, slander, accuse him, envy him, kill him. But your heart is so pure. For God is love. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And because you honor the words of your son, you have forgiven us that repent and follow him. Lord Jesus Christ, that you would choose to leave your throne in the heart, in the bosom of God the Father, just to save us. You would become flesh and dwell among us, knowing you would be mocked, not only while you were on the earth, but hundreds and now 2,000 years later, people still blaspheme and undermine you as some other type of God, when you are the Almighty the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. And we are so grateful that you will be in the rightful place you deserve to be forever and ever. On your throne, which is the heart of God the Father. Holy Spirit, we love you so much. You are beyond power, beyond might. You are so amazing. We love you, Holy Ghost. We thank you for this word. Don't let the devil take it out of our heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Saints of God, brothers and sisters, life-changing word. 
there's so much more to this message. So much more. Draw near unto God and he'll draw near to you. Resist the devil and he will flee. By the grace of God, we'll be back with more dinner table messages. Like I said, as we are traveling and maybe different tables, you know. Of course, obviously my wife and I miss an official dinner table. But when Abraham traveled, when men and women of God traveled, they realized real quick that he's the almighty God wherever they go. So no matter what table we find, he's definitely going to be the chef of all chefs. Can I get an amen? We love y'all so much. We thank you for standing by our side in this fight against the enemy, against Satan and his kingdom. Remain faithful to the almighty. Because when you're faithful to Christ... You'll be faithful to us. Until next time, we love y'all so much. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Jesus Christ, shine, shine. We need you, Lord. Jesus, shine. Your light in the dark. Jesus Christ. Oh, shine, shine, shine. Shine your light on all. I'd feel the clock speeding Walk the earth but the devil's in the dark creeping Children taught to hate Another Glock squeezing Another homicide Got the whole block weeping How could God pull his heart out his chest Give it to us in the form of Jesus And we make it stop beating Falsely accuse him and nail him to the cross bleeding Stab him in his side to double check he's not breathing Every knee will bow soon you will hear On the third day they checked up in his tomb it was clear And as the world gets covered in darkness Like King David if God is my light who shall I fear Lord shine on that Christian slipping away Caught up in the world been too busy to pray Lord shine on the children today Half the parks are empty Cause around here the pistol will spray Jesus Christ Shine Shine We need you Lord Jesus shine